Thank you, Chairman Alexander and Ranking Member Murray and the members of the committee. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here today to testify on stabilizing premiums and helping individuals in the individual insurance market. <clears throat> I'm honored to be part of this group of governors that are testifying today because we deal with these issues every day and we want to work with Congress and the federal government on health care reform. Massachusetts has achieved near universal coverage with the highest rate of individuals with health insurance in the nation. That's a story I'm sticking to, too. And that's because we've been working and reworking it for more than 10 years. At the center of our bipartisan success is the belief that health care coverage is a shared commitment, not the singular responsibility of government. As you consider measures to stabilize premiums and address the individual market, I'd like to emphasize four key points. First, Bipartisan cooperation is essential to achieving quality, affordable health care coverage and stabilizing any market. Second, Congress should take immediate affirmative steps to resolve the federal cost-sharing reduction payments until longer-term reforms are enacted. Carriers, providers, and employers, and people all need certainty about what rates are going to be, and month-to-month -month resuscitation of cost-sharing reductions is not stabilization. They should be maintained for at least two years. As future reforms are considered, a key contributor to market stability is the presence of younger and healthier people in the market. When Massachusetts passed its universal health care law in 2006, we included an individual mandate, which I support. For starters, no one really knows when they might get sick or have a tragic accident. And once it happens, they will seek care and it will be provided. And in many circumstances, they will be unable to pay for it. And that means everyone else who has insurance will be paying for the health care services rendered to those without coverage. In addition, if people have unlimited access to purchase coverage, many will purchase health insurance only when they need it and then drop it once their care is provided, defeating the whole point behind insurance in the first place. Continuous coverage encouraged using incentives and consequences is a critical element in ensuring that everyone's treated fairly. Different states can choose different approaches, but if we want to make insurance affordable for people that do not have access to coverage through work and don't qualify for public coverage, we need to nudge everyone into purchasing coverage and then keeping it. Third, Congress should establish broader parameters for insurance market reforms that include greater latitude for states to meet the unique needs of their residents in healthcare marketplaces. 1332 waivers should be broadened for greater state flexibility. It's no secret that Massachusetts is committed to continuing to provide access to high quality affordable health insurance for all of our residents. An increased waiver flexibility would allow us to more effectively meet that commitment. Three areas where changes to 1332 waivers would be significant benefit to states are essential health benefit compliance, benefit design, and budget neutrality. Massachusetts is a strong benefit state. We support essential health benefits. However, even in our state, it was a challenge to adapt to the overly strict federal framework of the ACA. Fourth, Congress should take action to address health care costs, and one critical driver is rising pharmaceutical costs. Among other actions, safely expediting the FDA approval process, increasing competition by ensuring generic drug availability, and creating greater opportunities for public payers to negotiate prices should be pursued. As you consider these and other reforms to our health care system, I would ask that any legislative changes occur on a gradual timeline, ideally with state flexibility to opt out or grandfather in existing programs in order to prevent market shocks and to improve market stability. Finally, as governors were... The nomination is hereby ordered, reported favorably to health of our residents. Reforms can't place states at significant fiscal risk. Any reforms should not shift greater financial burden onto states. Complex legislation requires fine-tuning and adjustments, and in Massachusetts, we have repeatedly revisited health care reform as we've learned from implementation and as conditions have changed. And our Commonwealth is better for that. I urge common Congress to commit, as we did, to returning to the table in a bipartisan fashion to review and revise any enacted reforms in the coming years. 
I well, thank you again for this opportunity to provide testimony on this important issue, and we look forward to working with you and other members of Congress as you consider legislation. I have submitted written testimony that goes into greater length on these and other issues and would be happy to take questions on that uh, or anything else. Thank you.